Hello VC, hello Vinyl community. Another video with some of my records and stuff I've been listening to in the last days, in the last week. Starting with my latest purchase, which is The Red Planet by Rick Wakeman. Yes, uh, so I could not say no to a album with a cover like that. This is something for true boy dreams and um, Look at this, quite a beauty. Now, obviously, we have to talk about the music. So, um, it is true that I, I have not been holding my breath regarding uh, this uh, album when it was announced. Simply because with Rick Wakeman you never know. I mean, he's, he has made so many albums that... Uh, and um, one could say that this is a bit of a checkered track record. At least for me, so uh, particularly the stuff he did the last 20 years. Some of it I like, some of it I don't care that much about. So um, I didn't know what to expect. Then it arrived and I must say, after the first listen, I think it is pretty cool. And it's quite a return to a old form of sorts. Um, it's almost like a kind of a futuristic sibling to the Six Wives of Henry VIII. Um, it has uh, this kind of a tight band sound. This is basically a four-piece with uh, Rick Wakeman on all kind of keyboards, uh, with uh, Dave Colcone on guitars and Ash Zone on drums and Lee Pomeroy on bass. And um, they sound pretty good. And this is uh, basically one big analog synthesizer pornography. Um, the music is uh, very cool and intense and uh, sliding from one solo to another. So uh, obviously what you see is what you get. Um, there is no two ways about it. Um, this is kind of a pure um, old school progressive rock. And um, if that's something you don't like, then this is not for you. But um, Obviously, many people um, look back in nostalgia to the good old days of the 70s and uh, this is kind of the vibe, the vein uh, that this album continues. So yeah, um, I was not holding my breath, uh, but um, I was very positively surprised and this is an album that uh, is worth uh, exploring and um, I've just bought it a few days ago. so. Uh, I didn't have the time to listen to it more than twice, but um, even after the second listen, I felt like, yeah, this is something I will return to. And yeah, cool cover design. Um, I like this kind of stuff. So yeah, concept, concept album about the planet Mars. Um, it's a double album with eight tracks. Uh, each side has two tracks and Every track uh, is named after a location on the surface of Mars. And uh, so it's uh, kind of checking all the boxes uh, for a proper progressive rock album. So the next one um, is a 12 inch or an EP by an artist called Eva Geist. And it's called Dnihep. Dnihep is uh, just the word behind backwards. Um, this is a pretty cool um, minimalistic techno, uh, very atmospheric, evocative, I would even say, with a touch of uh, dark ambient, um, quite, it sounds very experimental, but at the same time, it's a rather pleasant listen. It evokes a certain atmosphere, um, and I really enjoyed it, and um, also I love the cover. This was uh, designed by designed by Maria Torres, uh, and it's quite a beautiful, beautiful artwork. So uh, this is quite a wonderful EP called Dniep by um, Eva Geist. So the next one is a ratio um, by a record by Aleke Kanonu, simply called Aleke. Uh, this is uh, this is an album that originally came out in 1980. Um, this is a uh, rather uh, intense raw Afrobeat uh, with a singer that um, has actually rather a soulful style of singing. And um, the music is 
fantastic. Um, this was produced by William S. Fisher, and uh, who I think wrote all the tracks. And um, yeah, it's the kind of a cool, rough, uh, pumping Afrobeat um, that uh, some of you maybe appreciate. This was this is a reissue on an Austrian label called PMG. Now this is not the best pressing in the world, but um, on the other hand, tracking down the original album is probably not such a good idea unless uh, you want to pay some serious money for a copy that's still good enough. Um, but uh, it didn't bother me. Um, it's quite a cool sound and uh, yeah, I mean if you like kind of a rough Afrobeat uh, that is really intense and sweaty then this is a good album. Only four tracks on this record, so you can kind of imagine the feverish atmosphere of this music. Um, one more album that was a PMG re-release and that's uh, um, this kind of compilation uh, with the music of Ahmed Fakrun. Ahmed Fakrun is a singer from Libya and uh, this is his music recorded somewhat between 1974 to until till 1979. Yeah, he was probably one of the very first uh, North African uh, singers or musicians that uh, kind of made a dent uh, abroad. Uh, a lot of these tracks were recorded in Italy and in London. And this is a pretty cool record. Um, I really like these songs. Um, there is a there is a very heartfelt feeling to this music, but at the same time, it's quite funky and it's quite groovy, and um, it's a pretty cool uh, music. Um, if you can try to find a song called Nisian, the third song on this album, um, this is a pretty cool song, and I'm quite sure you will enjoy it. Um, Ahmed Fakrun. Um, and uh, this kind of self-titled compilation. I mean, it's I I wouldn't say it's a compilation per se because uh, the material on this record basically comes from two records, which at this point should be probably a little hard to find. Um, but yeah, it seems like a nice collection of Ahmed Fakrun's music. Very enjoyable. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, I've been listening to this record. Uh, Tail spinning by the Weather Report. Um, lately, I've been listening much more to Weather Report, uh, kind of getting deeper into their sound. So this was their fifth album and came out in 1975, at least I think. Yeah, on CBS. Yeah, like all Weather Report albums, it has a rather insane lineup with Wayne Shorter on uh, saxophone, Nodugu Chancellor on drums, Alfonso Johnson on uh, bass guitar. And Alirio Lima on percussions, and uh, yeah, obviously Joe Zavinol on keyboards. And uh, I really like it. I think this is one of the more overlooked albums by Weather Report, but um, I find it very enjoyable. Particularly, B side is starting with a track called Badia, which is almost like a kind of a proto ambient composition, uh, beautifully sounding and very atmospheric. And generally, this is a rather funky, jazzy album. Um, as you would expect, and great joy to listen to. Um, this uh, I bought not that long ago, kind of a new discovery for me. This is an album called Nuova Napoli by New Guinea. I was running around a while trying to figure out how this Italian band's name is being pronounced because it kind of does not look that Italian until I realized that yeah, they're an Italian band, but the name is kind of English, New Guinea. <laughs> it's very simple, actually. Uh, I was just thinking, is this a New Guinea? New Guinea? It kind of made no sense, but it's just New Guinea. And uh, the record is called Nuova Napoli. Now, this outfit is uh, basically um, playing sort of a new disco with a lot of jazz funk elements. Some wonderful bass playing by Roberto Badoglio. And um, some of the tracks are instrumental. Some of them have uh, a female vocalist, kind of emulating uh, the the disco vibe of the early 80s. And yeah, overall, it's a nice one. Um, really kind of a uplifting, upbeat album. 
that can get you through the day rather quickly. So Nuova Napoli by New Guinea. Yeah, this one I had on my list for quite a while, so I finally bought it. Another um, production by Analog Africa called uh, Space Echo, the mystery behind the cosmic sound of Cabo Verde. Um, so this is a double album with the music of Cabo Verde um, from around the late 70s and early 80s. Um, so this is a very kind of Afro-Cuban music, um, but um, reflecting uh, the style of those years, which uh, had all these interesting kind of electronic uh, early synthesizer technology involved. Um, so it's a pretty uh, nice uh, double album to sink your teeth in and to study and immerse yourself into. As you would expect from Analog Africa, it comes uh, with uh, wonderful liner notes, with uh, all kind of uh, stories about the musicians and uh, how the music of this era was recorded and perceived back in the day. So yeah, great creation and another great job by Analog Africa. Oh, I have some more records here. Oh yes, um, this one is Sclash by Leroy. Um, I've already shown uh, his second album Bambadea quite a while ago. Um, I really like Bambadea, it's a wonderful record that uh, has this uh, beautiful kind of feeling of journey and uh, is very playful and in parts dreamy. So this was his previous record, uh, came out in 2015 on the Shamoni label in Munich. This is uh, the edition on white vinyl. Um, yeah, very cool album. Um, it's uh, stylistically obviously similar to Bambadea. I think in parts a little more edgy, maybe. It starts with this rather epic track like a disease, which uh, takes over 12 minutes. Um, also, uh, there are all kind of uh, interesting uh, references, stylistic references to uh, more like folky, uh, psychedelic uh, styles of music. But uh, as always with uh, Leroy, um, it's always on the verge between a homage and persiflage. And it's for you, the listener, to decide uh, how you perceive it. Um, so uh, this, this, is, this is kind of interesting from an artistic point of view. And there are all kind of cool tracks here. There's a track called Sky, S-K-A-I, which is uh, quite fantastic. So yeah, this is a really good album. And... Uh, rather enjoyable music that is kind of difficult to categorize but I would say this is a sort of a dubstep with elements of uh, even trip-hop and uh, sort of down-tempo deep house music but it's kind of all of it and nothing of it and that makes it certainly interesting. So this is Sclash by Leroy released on the Shamoni label. All right, and I have one more record here that I've been listening to. Um, this is uh, a Japanese band called Melon. Um, this is a spin-off project by uh, Toshio Nakanishi and Chika Sato, uh, ex-members of, of the Plastics. And this is kind of a cool uh, new wave, uh, Japanese new wave record with all kind of elements uh, ranging from Latin to kind of post-punk and uh, jazz funk and it's a bit of a time capsule of the early 80s I would say. Um, this was an album they recorded uh, in the United States in New York and um, with a completely shameless lineup. I mean, <laughs> I mean you have Masami Tsuchiya playing guitar Masami Tsuchiya is this kind of a string instrument uh, savant who can basically play everything from a guitar to a violin. Um, you have uh, Yukihiro Takahashi on drums. Why not? You have Haruomi Hosono and Percy Jones on bass. Um, you have Bernie Worrell on keyboard. So yeah, that's uh, my kind of lineup. And this is the first edition that actually came out with real leaf gold put on the front of the cover. 
So uh, yeah, one day if I should get hungry because uh, I've purchased too many records then I can scrape it off and maybe I'll get a free meal for it. Um, yeah, so this is a melon. Do you like Japan? It also came uh, with this uh, little leaflet inside. The two kind of remind me of uh, Pizzicato 5 that uh, appeared somewhat 10 years later uh, during the Shibuya times. Um, but the music is very different. And uh, this album came out on Alpha. And it was released in the year 1980. Huh. If I only knew. Uh, 1982. I should have guessed. So uh, that's it for now. And uh, I hope some of it caught your attention. It was quite eclectic today. And um, have a nice day and see you next time. Goodbye.